Something strange is killing animals. It's called the chupacabra, and wherever it's reported, it leaves its mark. The animal was probably not a dog, probably not a coyote. Now what? Mythical, despicable chupacabra. Could this be the legendary chupacabra or goat sucker? the butthole cut folks welcome to werewolf radar the world's premier paranormal preparedness podcast my name is jordan doll i am nate balding i thought i was muted but i wasn't that whole time i'm the unmutable roger norquist and today's episode of werewolf radar is brought to you by monstroco brand Krylenol. have you lost the ability to cry for whatever reason take two of these tablets you'll be weeping buckets in no time and you won't know why <laughs> oh no jordan took a little Krylenol bit. from monstroco what the fuck so yeah this is if you like uh you know you're 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 damaged by emo music or violent video games or something and you lo- no longer can feel uh, sadness mm-hmm. uh, you, you can take a couple of these pill pills and you will feel a deep soul crushing sadness that they probably only felt in world war ii the last time <laughs> <laughs> um, well now my understanding too is that like me i had my tear ducts removed a few hmm, years ago interesting and i i believe krylenol will actually grow them back it'll grow them back it but with them, like thorns right they they are uh their new glands from from another dimension as as with all of monstroco uh pro, pharmaceutical products specifically these are made with mysterious energies and materials gathered from the rift in the base of the manufacturing facility so just know that yeah. when you take this them. <laughs> it's all it's all stuff from the right side up yeah <laughs> Is it uh is it made with the ghosts of lost children? Who knows? We don't know what lives in the rift. It's scary in there. <laughs> they just grab something and come back, test it for properties. Monstroco. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> Makers of terrifying oh. products. So how y'all doing, fellas? Oh, doing fantabulous. We are we have a theme this week. We do. Sure we do. And we are doing uh, Latin monsters, Latin ghosts. Yes, we are. Sp- spanning from South America to Spain and in between, we got we got a couple of a couple of real weird ones lined up for you. Is anybody, is anybody I, ready? I would like to go first. Hell yeah! Because I so got yeah. I got kind of a basic one to kind of put our waters in, or our toes into the water. Our waters oh, in I, the toes. Yeah, <laughs> as we do here in the bunker. That's how they do it at Monstroco. You get a you get a glass of toes and pour water over it. <laughs> so I am going to inform us a little bit about El Chupacabra. Hey, hey. Chupacabra. Never have, heard of him. You probably actually have, Jordan. You might the have monk? seen him in some in some literatures and some pop cultures. In fact, the creature behind me is the chupacabra. Oh, the creature behind me is my dog. Thank God. <laughs> I, and I interestingly think I saw enough, that guy at a DOA show. <laughs> you probably have seen pictures of mangy dogs claim Truly. claiming to be El Chupacabra. Quite often seems to be the take. <clears throat> Usually, when I uh, approach a mangy dog, they're like, "Hey, stay back! I'm a chupacabra." Mm-hmm. This is That's... from <clears throat> this is from remisclaw.com list culture thirteen spooky, terrifying, spooky, and awesome Latin American horror monsters and legends. Okay, there Love were it. some great ones on this list. You had El Cuco. El, El, Sambar- or El Sambaron, Ooh. which is the hat man. We've talked about him. Yeah, I think he was a grave nugget. Acalica, La Llorona. Mm-hmm. Shout out. Luz Marcelo Mala, Duran. The Duende. All sorts of fun ones. But I was all like, <laughs> you know what? Those are all advanced creatures. I get, yes. Those are advanced level. Those are really high experience. <laughs> 
yeah, creatures. Those, those are evolved various evolutions of the truth. <laughs> exactly. I um I gotta tell you guys something really funny that happened to me uh over the week. I was playing video games with my friends as I want to do. Mm-hmm. A couple of fellas who are deep anime uh nerds, and uh I asked them. Does the word yaoi mean anything to you guys? <laughs> and they said, they said, absolutely, long pause. And I was like, great, because I have a cool story about the yaoi. So the yaoi kidnapped this Australian guy and took him to his lair where he said a bunch of hairy legs had been hung up against the wall. It was at that point that they told me that the yaoi they are familiar with yes. means boy, boy, love. <laughs> yes. Uh, yes. <laughs> and it is a specific type of manga where people uh, ship uh, male, male relationships. Mm-hmm. Usually a lot of the time from like another popular manga, it would be like, what if these two guys were dating? Yeah, it's kind of There's a, a whole book it's about a, it's it. It's a, a slash fiction kind of a situation. A slash fit kind of situation. It so is. they thought I was telling a completely different story. It is <laughs> very like, popular. Are these hairy yeah. legs going to come to life and have a bunch of <laughs> yeah. penises? Yeah, what is this? My pants are off. I mean, this is not the story <laughs> I was expecting. Uh, and then they were both a little disappointed when I revealed to them that it was just an Australian cryptid. Just a monster. So, yeah. Well, this one has some fun sucking abilities. Okay. <laughs> which are a feature of Yahweh manga. Sure. That's true. I, I mean, the Yahweh, the Chupacabrotica <laughs> industry we have discussed before is, uh, it you is know, strong and it is thriving. Doesn't just suck goats. I'll put it that way. So, country <laughs> of origin, Puerto Rico, mm-hmm. the rich coast. Like the rich a coast, Latin sorry. American Bigfoot or Loch Ness Monster. El Chupacabra or Chupacabras Mm -hmm. literally means goat sucker for the Spanishly challenged. It is a beast. (laughs) Is that in there? It is. I'm reading this word for word from Remezcla.com. It is a beast whose alleged existence has plagued farmers and the collective Latin consciousness for some time now. However, I don't think it goes too far past Mexico. I think it kind of is like a Gulf of Mexico type cryptid. Yeah, Central South America, more, Puerto Rico. More often than not, yeah. Also, uh, Texas. Texas has a lot of... The Gulf of Mexico. Chupacabrotica. <laughs> oh, they, what a great... They can't stop fucking them What there. a great title. <laughs> if, uh, if you care to, go to our Libsyn channel. You can find the episode Chupacabrotica. Mm-hmm. Or whatever it was. That yeah, I whatever said. it was. It was something. Like... <laughs> anyway, the first re- nope, that's not done with this sentence. Quite not quite as old as Sasquatch, the Yeti, or even the Jersey Devil. The legend of El Chupacabra dates back to just 1995. Mm-hmm. The first report of Chupaca- of a Chupacabra attack was in March of that year. Through some say reports go all the way back to the 60s in Puerto Rico. Eight sheep were killed and completely drained of blood. Mm-hmm. And semen. And no, wait, that's <laughs> sorry. That's that's, that's, that's a different. That's the Yahweh. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> the Yahweh. <laughs> uh, to completely drained with blood, which is a bizarre thing. Yeah, that's. To have no <laughs> other attacks. It's, it's definitely. But, exsanguination is uh, definitely unusual. There yeah, it doesn't just only, happen. There were only three puncture marks in each of their chests so like it's they weren't up. maimed they weren't mutilated they were found dead and completely drained of blood insanguinated yes and, and like like nate says that doesn't just happen it's it, you, ne- you never it doesn't your blood doesn't just fall out unless you pull out the cork that you know is in front of sure. your left aorta or unless no one does that that's or, insane <laughs> unless you're flossing <laughs> yeah authorities attributed or, the or killings flow is here i'm sorry there's a lot honestly now that i'm thinking about it there's a lot of there's actually a lot of bleeding <laughs> sometimes your blood falls out of your body but not you all of love it to bleed <laughs> yeah. authorities attributed the killings to more conventional predators but many locals suspected a satanic cult which mm-hmm. i'm on with you locals that seems to make a lot of sense why you need all that blood but not the meat what you doing with all that blood? Now that's a good point. And well, 
Hmm. I'm just thinking like, is how would you get the blood out of a goat? <laughs> The only evidence we have, and there's lots of ways, as we discussed, humans and sheep are very <laughs> humans and goats and sheep are very similar in that regard. Yeah. In that the blood wants to stay in. <laughs> and sometimes <laughs> it wants to leave though, if there's like a sometimes hole or something. Gotta go. Sometimes this blood's gotta go. Yeah, I, I'm I'm thinking more like but the like only evidence how, we have is three puncture holes. How would you physically do it? Like if if your boss came to you and was like, Roger, I need all this blood out of this goat by tomorrow. Like, how would you, I would go traditional way. I would, I would, I would say a prayer to Allah. I would slit its throat and Uh I would drain it upside down, hang it upside down over a tub or something. Right. Uh, Generally speaking, you don't use the the shop vac in a three prong attachment, (laughs) which although, (laughs) although the second you said that, I was like, yeah, okay. Yeah. Shop (laughs) vac. That does sound right. Yeah, so like you're on with me. This is weirdly bizarre. Yes. That kind of puts images of aliens, of testing, mm-hmm. of something that doesn't mm-hmm. need the flesh, but is just using the blood for whatever yeah, reason. Right. It, it does a have cult uh, with a shot back. Mm-hmm. Shades, shades of cattle mutilation mm-hmm. in there. Exactly. But nothing else was taken. No organs, no blah, blah, blah. Authorities attributed killings to more conventional predators. Locals said it was a satanic cult. By August, 150 similar livestock killings had taken place. And by the end of the year, the mysterious beast had been blamed over for over a thousand deaths. Well, see, also, I mean, even just with the first one where there was uh, eight goats killed, that implies to me that it's like a family or, or a, you know... Yeah. A, a a what do you what do you call a group of chupacabras a, uh, a chalupa of chupacabras <laughs> I think it would be a chup a chup of chupacabras I think the word is a junta but now I'm using a chalupa <laughs> of chupacabras what about um so like here's the here's your risky Google search for the day <laughs> who who wants who wants to Google how much how much blood is in an average goat all right. <laughs> Adam Art. P in the chat was immediately. I, oh, I'm already googling. <laughs> All right, uh, this is uh, this is why you Miller? get on Dark Council. This is why you join our live recording so you can this is, Google. Uh, <laughs> this is How in much? milliliters per kilogram. Okay. okay, so it depends on the weight of the goat. Good God! Uh, but the average is seventy milliliters per kilogram. Okay, so let's say we've got a, 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 a 50 now kilo Now we have to Google goat. how much sheep weigh I mean, or how much goats weigh. It's, it's, it's going to be in the tens of thousands of kilograms. Oh, Jesus Christ. Most adult female goats weigh between 120 and 170. But we're doing oh, okay. kilograms, so we're doing 70 to 90. Okay, so... Oh, that's either, male. 55, 55 to 90. <laughs> either way, we're talking about kilograms many tens, kilograms many tens okay. of liters of goats because apparently they're metric that's a lot <laughs> goats are only in metric sorry yeah do you do you want to know how much is in a dog ferret or gerbil those are yeah, other right. animals that came up here. yeah why not <laughs> <laughs> well my point is i think i think one chupacabra would be hard pressed to drain nine goats unless it had you know, just been released from some sort of genetic testing right. facility yes. and was like, yeah. oh, I'm hungry. I could literally murder several goats. Which well, is I mean, a theory of what uh, released the chupacabra mm. is that it could have been a U.S. lab in Puerto Rico. Oh, yeah, the NASA lab That was theory. hit by a hurricane in 1995. And in the, uh, in the folklore of the story, it was a lab owned by NASA where NASA does its biomedical experiments. There's a few legends. I heard it was that one that also owns the lab in Long Island that did oh, the, long, uh, the Three Mile Isle creature. Sorry, Pepsi. that one. Yeah, Pepsi. Well, that was... Pepsi. <laughs> Pepsi Cola. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, same same diff, same diff. The legend is, it was a lab. This is not an earthly creature, mm-hmm. essentially. Right. They think that they were using some kind of extraterrestrial DNA and blending it with the DNA of other shit and this and that and i'll tell you my crazy theory at the end okay i got not much longer on this one 
uh, that was that was uh, the intro. We got a bunch of killings. 150 are similar to that. So this family is the only way, or like I guess a small population of chupacabras mm-hmm. we never found again. That's so much blood. <laughs> so do the, much blood. Do the math on that, Pingos. Blood. 150 times 70 kilograms times 700 milliliters is how much blood this 70 family. milliliters. Oh, thank God. 700 was too much. Oceans of blood. Oceans no, of I blood. Was, still. I was also thinking that a kilogram was way less than it is. Uh, I think I was just thinking of grams. <laughs> so anyway, like, there's got to be so many kilograms. <laughs> bodies are piling up in in Puerto Rico and some Latin American creature or uh, countries, including Texas. Mm-hmm. Descriptions of the creature varied wildly. People started seeing this in the town of Can- Canovanas. The uh-huh. creature was described as winged. Swooping down Whoa. on its prey. Cool. However, I think we have talked about certain bat gods and bat creatures that some Mexican states have that this mm-hmm. that this sighting could be blamed on. Mm-hmm. Bat squatch down there. In yeah. Col- Caguas, it was yeah. said to have hairy arms and red eyes. Oh, and nothing else. And this is all in 1995. <laughs> No pants, no shoes, no service. <laughs> no service. <laughs> Just red eyes. It's those eyes. By the end of 1995, the most prevalent description was gray alien-like creature about three to four feet tall that walks upright on its muscular muscular hind legs. Okay. Oh, just the, the thighs of a swimmer, man. <laughs> <laughs> In 1996, reports of chupacabra attacks were being reported on the mainland as well, beginning in Miami and later in the Southwest and in Mexico. Sorry, 1996, we start getting the rest of the golf course or golf. uh, golf (laughs) I like calling it the rest of the golf course. (laughs) (laughs) The chupacabra golf course. Chupacabra putt putt. Mm Mm-hmm. Either if the you creature... get into one of the goat's three puncture holes, you win a special prize. Mm-hmm. And here's, I guess, and it's, my it's blood. That's the prize. <laughs> here's, a goat's I guess, worth. My ending thesis on on my segment, Chupacá, bro. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Either the creature had migrated, or stories have become so popular that reports of sightings and copycat attacks were being mm-hmm. carried out here too. This time, the creature was described as dog-like, but reptilian. Mm -hmm. Either the chupacabra exists or not, reports of bloodless, murdered livestock persist. Right. So what are we thinking? At the end of the day, that... Chihuahua snake. (laughs) (laughs) Wait, is that a snake that's part chihuahua or just a snake with a chihuahua in its mouth? Chihuahua that's part snake. All right, uh, thank you for doing the math. I know you guys said it already, but the sheep has, for those who got caught up in the banter, 300 or 735 liters of blood. What? That's crazy. So first of all, has to be, I'm all for Chupacabra being real. As our friend and and comedian Kevin Fitzgerald said, the world is more wonderful with more species in it. Mm -hmm. I'm saying this is a species I think from the movie, I think, I think we got from the movie, <laughs> from the movie species, and that's why is, it looks so similar. Is a weird part of this whole story. So, like the 1995, when it was first spotted, species was in theaters. The woman who first uh, who first reported it drew a picture of the creature she saw that looks remarkably like the monster from Very Species. Very much so. I'm she going saw to the movie she picture. had recently seen it's earlier that week. Exactly. But the thing is something kept sucking blood so yeah either she saw the creature from species or there's something else that was a little harder to identify that is uh trundling around uh sucking sucking goats if you will roger i don't know what it is something happened eight Uh 150 sheep were killed Mm -hmm. that way yeah so something was doing it Colt sure, was shot yeah. back is a possibility. I think exactly. we're all agreed that Chupacabra is real, probably an alien creature that's thirsty for blood. I think that the I think my theory is that something is chugging blood out there, but I don't think that it's alien. I think that it's from this planet. I think it's been with us far longer than people know. I think that uh, 
you know, minor deities in Mesoamerican faith, like Camazots, or maybe thank you, the chasm. This. Ca- yeah, Chasmod is it, or may are maybe based on this uh, this critter. And I think we're talking about a gigantic subterranean megaphonic bat that sometimes finds its way out. And friggin', can you imagine a bat the size of a pit bull just trundling at your goat? tackling it into the (laughs) into the underbrush and sucking its blood out and i think because if you look at vampire bats uh their their dental structure is not two fangs on top two fangs on bottom it's two fangs on top two fangs pressed closely together on the bottom that could look like one fang yeah oh i yeah you're right that's my crazy theory and I think there's I think there's a very small population of them. I think that they they generally live in the underdark. <laughs> <laughs> That's why we can't find them. Exactly. And 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 you know, one, maybe two of them uh, found their way out at, to this new source of food. And they were like, y'all, <laughs> y'all, <laughs> there are so many goats up there. We will never we'll, we'll never drink slug blood again. You got to get up here. You gotta, you gotta. That's my theory. Uh, well, and you've also uh, inadvertently brought a, a new paranormal slur into our lexicon. <laughs> and that is those fucking blood chuggers from down <laughs> south. The chupacabra. Mug huckers, blood chuggers. United. Two blickers was my favorite one Two from the blickers. Grave Nugget. <laughs> Mirror foggers. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's my uh, segment, though. I pass the speaking skull on to one of you. Uh, Nate, would you like I, to? I can, yeah, absolutely. Hit me. Uh, so I went, uh, I, I, I am currently in the Boise adjacent bunker. Oh. Uh, this is the uh, largest Basque population in the United States, possibly one of the largest Basque populations in the world outside of the Basque region. Interesting, so, I didn't know that. I've got a uh, a segment about it makes it seem like it's by the, force. I guess I guess <laughs> <laughs> or it makes Boise seem I think, really cool. I think they were I think they were fleeing Franco probably. Oh, okay. uh, oh yeah, I forgot here. about the bad There's that too. Uh, I was <laughs> uh, te- technically not uh, Spanish as they uh, have mm-hmm. their own language, but they speak plenty of Spanish in Basque country too and sure. some French by force. Uh, I would consider so this, this part uh, of the Latin world. As, yeah, as a white is... dude sitting at his computer <laughs> i sign <laughs> off on it <laughs> this is a, a segment that uh that i think i'm probably going to come back to called uh, either they might be giants or big basque world <laughs> <laughs> could it be big basque pro shops <laughs> <laughs> well that's that's where you go to find all the stuff to fight these various <laughs> basque giants hunt giants it's giant country huh Yep, there are plenty of giants. Uh, this first one we're going to talk about is Tartaro. Uh, so I'm going to give you some, a little bit of ethnography, a little description, Totoro? and then Tartaro. But awesome. my neighbor, my neighbor Tartaro, would be uh, fairly appropriate <laughs> uh, to to some of the stories. And then I'm just going to read a couple of the uh, of the legends. Uh, this is mostly coming from uh, a book that you can find on Project Gutenberg, just called Basque Legends. It's a Ooh. collection of a bunch of different anthropologists. Who or what is the Tartaro? Oh, you mean the man with one eye in the middle of his forehead is the prompt and universal <laughs> answer? Ah! The, the oh, you mean old oh, Joey with the one eye? One eye oh, Jojo, we call Johnny him? One Eye. The Tartaro is the Cyclops, the sun's round eye. Then it Whoa. says something in Greek that I can't read. But the word Tartaro has apparently nothing to do with this. Monsieur Sercrand, in his Legends et Récits Populaires du Pays Basque, Ooh. derives the word from Tartare, Tartar, in the same way as the French word ogre is said to be derived from Angoué, Ougri. Interesting. Uh, yeah, uh, so it's possibly a of a French origin, although they also mentioned that it may have its origin in Sicily. Uh, it's possible that the Basque people were in that they that they actually extended as a civilization as far as Sicily when during during ancient 
Greece, basically. Oh, okay, and the, sure. The, Cy- the Cyclops myth of Greece and the Cyclops myth of Tartaro uh, do have a lot saying. of crossover. There are some linguistic evidences for this, yes. Yeah. And elephants, uh, too. And elephants. Yeah. <laughs> remember how they thought elephant skulls were like Cyclops skulls? You guys remember the yeah, ancient yeah, yeah. past, right? Jesus Christ. Yeah, yeah. I forgot all about that. Yeah. They thought they about the that as a Cyclops thing. and straight up, like. It looks a lot like, yeah. <laughs> it looks like it could be the skull of a Cyclops. Well, I don't know what else came it came from. Yeah. If you've never seen an elephant, that is the only thing this could possibly be. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, so the yeah the, the Basque Tartaro Cyclops, uh, they think possibly predates the Cyclops in Odysseus. Okay, uh, that OG that OG Cyclops of, of Odysseus, yeah, uh, which is really interesting, uh, and, and no one really knows. There's hmm. just these like kind of vague connections, uh, mostly Almost linguistically. Like, well, you know real. if if. If we get enough Dark Council members together, we can buy that time machine Monstroco sells. Mm-hmm. It's true. But or it only can... takes you to the to the moments before a horrible catastrophe. <laughs> <laughs> that sucks. That's right. Or we could just do a date, uh, like, a, you know what? I'll call it a week trip to the, to the Basque region for a giant hunt. Yes. <laughs> anyway, check out our new Kickstarter, Basque Giant Hunt. <laughs> by werewolf radar yeah we promise it's not a trick to try and kill hellboy like in that terrible second hellboy movie that they made <laughs> uh this thing jumping ahead a little bit uh, as we said above the tartaro sometimes replaces the giant or the ogre at other times we find him as basa juan or even as an animal substituted for acaria the fox mm. he is in his proper form a huge one-eyed giant occasionally a cannibal but not without a rough bonhomie when satiated with food and drink <laughs> <laughs> Intellectually far below the feebler race of mankind, he is invariably beaten in his contests with them, notwithstanding <laughs> his enormous strength. He loses all his wagers and is generally lured on to commit involuntary suicide. Good God! <laughs> in some aspects, he reminds one of Milton's lover fiend, and his constant defeats and being constantly outwitted recalls one of the types of the devil of medieval story. You may recall Truly. one of those from gob fight yeah this the st- would be the stupid devil the stupid devil of wales at He's times back, he appears baby. <laughs> yep I at times really he appears bad in... now <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's uh, they're they're a little bittersweet the uh, the stories of charter uh, he's stupid uh, who cares yeah. At times he appears in gentler guise as when he aids the young prince to his rights and supplies Petit Yorg with the means of victory over the Heron Suge. Oh. What the top, what, so, and then they, they reference this talking ring, which appears in a few of the stories, uh, although they have not previously spoken about it in any of the paragraphs. So this is kind of an odd sentence. What the talking ring is, is which appears in so many of these stories, we confess ourselves unable to interpret. It is found in the Celtic, but as far as we are aware, not in the classic legends. Huh. Uh, one peculiarity of the Basque and especially of the Tartar religions is that the hero of them is often a madman, an idiot, or a fool. <laughs> <laughs> yes, check, check, check. <laughs> If we can trust our memory, the case is the same in the Slavonic representative, representatives of Odysseus. But the Basques seem to dwell upon and to repeat the idea in a peculiar way. They ring the changes on all states, from the wild madman, like the Scandinavian berserker, through the idiot and the fool, to the mere blockhead and ninny. <laughs> Irua, which and which one are you guys? guys? <laughs> I'm the ninny. Uh, I I'm think a, block. a blockhead. I'm a blockhead, yeah. too. <laughs> uh... Oh, well, it is raining pretty heavy here. I hope that's not noisy as fuck. Erewa and Uchenta Ergala Sos Tantua are terms employed to designate the heroes who have sometimes, to our modern apprehension, little of the idiot or fool except the name. Uh, they're all kind of derivatives of various uh, words for stupid. Okay. Uh, can it be that the power which put out the sun's fiery eye was looked upon as a beneficent being in a burning trap? Tropic land. Whoa. While as the legend traveled northward, the acts seem more like that of madness or of senseless stupidity. Hmm. Uh, then we'll jump to 
a couple of it's an interesting theory tales. one man's legend is another man's dumbass yeah <laughs> yeah you, you you travel 100 miles north and everyone's like what the f- yeah what her the story about hercules is- did what He's to stupid. a lion <laughs> yeah that's dumb that is uh i had a mythology teacher in college that was his overall theory of mythology is that one person's thunder god is another person that's called lightning (laughs) (laughs) sure uh so this first one is uh pretty close to what most of the typical legends are this is monsieur dabadi's version Uh, Uh, first first story was communicated by M. Dabadi to the Société des Sciences des, des Arts de Bayon. Hell of a society. Um, yeah, One of the, the narrator is the narrator is Monsieur Lab Eguaguarere? Mm-hmm. Who knows? Mm. Uh, no, the parish it exactly. of Esquile in La Soul. In my infancy, I often heard from my mother the story of the Tartaro. He was a colossus with only one eye in the middle of his forehead. He was a shepherd and a hunter, but a hunter of men. Oof. Every day he ate a sheep. Then after a snooze, everyone who had the misfortune to fall on his hands. His dwelling was a huge barn with thick walls, a high roof, and a very strong door, which he alone knew how to open. His mother, <laughs> an, old witch, an old witch, lived in one corner of the garden in a hut constructed of turf. Interesting. One day, a powerful young man was caught in the snares of the Tartaro, who carried him off to his house. This young man saw the Tartaro eat a whole sheep, and he knew that he was accustomed to take a snooze, and that after that his own turn would come. Mm. In his despair, he said to himself that he must do something. Directly, the Tartaro began to snore. Directly, the Tartaro began to snore. He put the spit in the fire, made it red hot, and plunged it into the giant's one eye. Immediately, he leapt up and began to run after the man who had injured him, but it was impossible to find him. You shall not escape. It is all very well to hide yourself, said he, but I alone know the secret how to open this door. The Tartaro then opened the door halfway and let the sheep out between (laughs) his legs. The young man Mm -hmm. takes the big bell off the ram and puts it round his neck and throws over his body the skin of the sheep, which the giant had just eaten, and walks on all fours to the door. The Tartaro exists. Tartaro examines him by feeling him, perceives the trick, and clutches hold of the skin. But Got the young man ass. slips off the skin, dives between his legs, and runs off. Immediately, the mother of Tartaro meets him and says, Oh, you lucky young fellow, you've escaped the cruel tyrant. Take this ring as a remembrance of your escape. He accepts, puts the ring on his finger, and immediately the ring begins to cry out, Heaven nook, heaven nook. Ah, oh, the talking ring. Yeah, yeah. Translates to, Thou hast me here, thou hast me here. The Tartaro pursues and is on the point of catching him when the young man, maddened with fright and not being able to pull off the ring, takes out his knife, cuts off his own finger, and throws it away, and thus escapes the pursuit of the Tartaro. Damn. I like uh, the mom then, who's all like, you did good. Here's, here's a here's curse. The, the, here's the, the, the snitch ring. <laughs> <laughs> like, good for yeah. her for holding her emotions together. I would not be able to. I'd be so upset if I saw my son's eye being poked out and she's like, no, hold her together. I'm going to hurt this person. Stop it. You're embarrassing me. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of them too, uh, where the the guy or whoever is escaping sometimes mm-hmm. it's a, a like a, a princess that he's been pursuing mm. uh, who you know, as long as the ring is screaming out, he can find her. Uh, cuts off their finger and like throws it over a cliff or into some <laughs> water or a bog. And then hmm. the Tartaro either falls off or goes in and drowns. Man, giants always think that they're smooth enough to make it with a princess. <laughs> they're always like, oh, no, I think I, I think if I could just get her to my place and, we, and talk to her, I think we'd really click. <laughs> we like all the same movies. <laughs> well i like sheep she likes sheep <laughs> uh here's a tale this is the tale of irua the madman mm. like many others in the world there was a man and a woman who had a son he was very wicked and did nothing but mischief and was of a thoroughly depraved disposition Irua-wa. the parents decided that they yeah the parents decided that they must send him away and the lad was quite willing to set off <laughs> he set out then and goes far 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 away He comes to a city and asks if they want a servant. They wanted one in a certain house. He goes there. They settle their terms at so much a month and that the one who is not satisfied should strip the skin off the other's back. (laughs) This is another thing that keeps coming up in these things. Dude. Uh, The 
direct quote. Uh, this is from Campbell's Make Rusgish, volume two. Good volume. Uh, the quote is, I am putting it into the covenant that if either one of us takes the rue, that a thong shall be taken out of his skin from the Ooh. back of his head to his heel. Ah! So, Brutal. yeah, whoever is unsatisfied uh, that he gets to tear the flesh off this guy. That's the gnarliest shit. That's so gnarly. Europe yeah. legends are tougher than american legends were they really yeah. doing shit like this though were they really like were motherfuckers I getting thonged? i can't imagine but i mean maybe That's, but, like, I, skin probably not work. from like that yeah like skin doesn't work like that you can't just like fucking oh i got a piece <laughs> <laughs> hey fruit by the foot <laughs> oh, I'm afraid it can. Oh, it's apparently a thing in legends. Like that's the, that's a little bit of truth. That's the kernel. Oh no, you can't be thong like that. Everything oh, else is a lie. The kernel. <laughs> I hate it. So anyway, it's un- under these conditions that uh, the master sends his servant to the forest to go get the most crooked pieces of wood that he can find. <laughs> Near the forest, there is a vineyard. What does the servant do but cut it all up and carries it to the house? The master asks him where the wood is. He shows him the vine wood cut up. The master said nothing to him, but he was not pleased. (laughs) Next day, the master says to him, take the cows to such a field and don't break any holes in the fence. (laughs) What does the lad do? He cuts all the cows into little pieces and throws them bit by bit into the field. Dude, (laughs) that's not what I meant. Didn't break the hole in the fence. The master was still more angry, but he could not say anything for fear of having his skin stripped off. Since whoever's the most mad gets to have the other guy's flesh. Damn, Good lord. Right. So what does he do? He buys a herd of pigs and sends his servant to the mountain with the herd. The master knew quite well that there was a Tartaro in this mountain, but he sends him there all the same. Our madman goes walking on, on, on. He arrives at a little hut. The Tartaro's house was quite close to his. My neighbor Tartaro. Oh, they're neighbors. My neighbor Tartaro. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the, the pigs of the Tartaro and those of the madman used to go out together. The Tartaro said to him one day. <laughs> he was a madman after all. Yeah. <laughs> the Tartaro said to him one day, will you make a wager as to who will throw a stone farthest? He accepted mm. the wager. That evening, our madman was very sad. While he was at his prayers, an old woman appeared to him and asked him, what's the matter with you? Why are you so sad? He tells her the wager that he's made with the Tartaro. The old woman says to him, if it is only that, it is nothing. And so she gives him a bird and says to him, instead of a stone, throw this bird. (laughs) Oh my God, look how far he threw that bird. Now now the rock is pooping. Oh, it's pooping on that car. Oh, now the rock is resting briefly in a tree and tending to baby rocks. (laughs) Well, you win this one, madman. The madman was very glad of this. The next day, he does as the old woman told him. The Tartaro stone went enormously far, but at last it fell. But the madman's bird never came down at all. Mm-hmm. The Tartaro was astonished that he had lost his wager, and they make another. Which of the two should throw a bar of iron the farthest? The madman accepted again. He was in his little house, sadly in prayer. The this old woman appears mad again. This madman <laughs> really keeps going. Up. She asks him, What's the matter with you? I have made a wager again. Which is the two throw the bar of iron the farthest? I have an I am very sorry. Old lady, you're not going to believe this. I have a problem. <laughs> I'll take any old... bet. <laughs> Can't stop gambling with giants. If it is only that, it is nothing. When you take hold of the bar of iron, say, rise up, bar of iron, here in Salamanca. Or, alchala palenka, hemen eta Salamanca. Hang on, oh, hang on. I'm, read, I'm writing prior. it down. Yeah. Down. Hang on, say it again. Okay. Uh, okay. Alchala Palenka. Palenka. Hemen et Hemen de Salamanca. Et de Salamanca. Okay. Uh, next day, the Tartaro takes his terrible bar of iron and throws it fearfully far. The young man could hardly lift up one end. Then he says, Rise up, bar of iron, here in Salamanca. When the Tartaro heard that, he cried out, I give up the wager. You have won. (laughs) He takes the bar of iron away from him. My father and mother live at Salamanca. Don't throw, I beg of you. I implore you, you will crush them. (laughs) (laughs) And our madman goes away very happy. (laughs) Also, strange strange behavior for the the man-eating giant to be like, well, you don't (laughs) want to hurt anyone. 
<laughs> uh, the Tatra says to him again, I will pull up the biggest oak in the forest and you pull up another. He says, yes. And the later it grew in the day, the sadder he became. He was Mad at his prayers. Man. The old woman comes to him again and says Mad to him, man. what's the matter with you? What did you do he now? tells of the wager he's made with the Tartaro and how he'll pull up an oak. The old woman gives him three balls of thread and tells him to begin and tie them to all the oaks in the forest. Next day, the Tartaro pulls up his oak, an enormously, enormously big one, and the madman begins to tie and to tie and to tie. The Tartaro asks him, what are you doing that for? You pulled up one, but I, all these. The Tartaro replies, no, no, no. What shall I do to fatten my pigs without acorns? You have won. You have won the wager. Wait, what? I get so it. He, I get this. He, Go on, Nate. He starts tying all the trees together, and he says, I'm going to pull up every tree in the forest. See, and this is tar- like, this is the a tar- wisdom. having been having been twice bested, is like, he's going to pull up all my goddamn trees. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but he didn't. He tied fucking tree- ropes tied around him. To him. That's They're not the purpose. There. He's being tricked. He thinks he can. Like, he made that stone fly so far, he believes this man's magic. And all these other all these other challenges have him been like threatening his p- parents' home, threatening the livelihood of his pigs, making a stone fly. Roger, remember when uh, you said that you got it? <laughs> I don't think you do. I do. I get this myth. <laughs> I understand that, like, if he'd have used the ropes to then pull them out, yes, that's one thing. But he did. Look, uh, it's all, it's all bluff. Totoro, you need to relax, my dude. You got. You need to believe in yourself, dude. See, the myth is you. You can. You can bluff someone with low confidence. Yeah, fool me once. <laughs> uh, the the, the Totoro did not know what to think about it, and saw that he had found one cleverer than himself. And so he asks him if he will come and spend the night at his, at his house. The madman says yes. Come on, <laughs> madman. He, he goes to bed then with the Totoro. But he knew that there was a dead man okay. under the bed. <laughs> what? When, when the Tartaro was asleep, what does the madman do? He places the dead man by the Tartaro's side and gets under the bed himself. In the middle of the night, the Tartaro gets up and takes his terrible bar of iron and showers blow upon blow. Ping pan, ping pan, as long, as hard, and as hard as he could give them. The Tartaro gets up as usual and goes to see his pigs. And the madman also comes out from under the bed, and he oh, goes yes. to see the pigs too. The Tartaro is quite astounded to see him coming and does not know what to think of it. Hysterical. He says to himself that he has to do with uh, he, sa- he says to himself that he has to do with a cleverer than he, but he asks him if he has slept well. He answers, this is the madman answering, yes, very well. Only I felt a few flea bites. Oh shit. <laughs> so did they had to, had to go in there? Oh yeah. Nice. <laughs> Their pigs had got mixed, and as they were fat, he had to separate them in order to go away with his. The Tartaro asks the madman what mark his pigs had. The madman says to him, mine have some of them one mark, some of them two marks. <laughs> they, they set to work to look at them, and they all had these same marks. Our madman then goes off with all the hogs. He goes walking on and on and on with all of his pigs. He comes to a town where it was just market day and sells them all except two, keeping, however, all the tails which he puts in his pocket. As you may think, he was always in fear of the Tartaro. He sees him coming down from the mountain. He kills one of his hogs and puts the entrails in his own bosom under his waistcoat. There was a group of men near the road. As he passed them, he took out his knife, stabs it into his chest, and pours out the pig's bowels. Fucking and our madman begins, he begins to run much faster than before. Holy so he's at like a solid jog. And then he goes into <laughs> a sprint after he drops the... Uh, the, the, the pig guts yeah. uh, with, his, with his pig in front of him. When the Tartaro comes up to these men, he asks if they have seen such a man. Yes, yes, he was running fast, and in order to go faster here, he stabbed himself and threw away his bowels, he and still he went on all the faster. The Crazy. Tartaro, too, in order to go faster, thrusts his knife into his body and falls oh, stark boy. dead. Holy shit. Tartaro... Um, Tartaro, this is a kid's movie. <laughs> <laughs> the madman goes to his master's. Near the house, there was a marsh quite full of mud. He puts his live pig into it and all the tails too. He enters the house and says to the master that he is there with his pigs. The master is astounded to see him. He asks him, where are the pigs then? He says to him, they've gone into the mud. They were so tired. 
Both go out and begin to get the real pig out. And between the two, they pull it out very well. They try to do the same thing with the others, but they keep pulling out nothing but tails. The madman says, <laughs> you see, you see how fat they are. That is why the tails come out alone. He sends ah, the servant nice. to fetch the, spade, fetch the spade and hoe. Instead of bringing them, he begins to... This is insane. I don't know where this, <laughs> this is This whole thing from. has been insane. <laughs> well, yes, this is this a, a capstone of complete insanity from the left field. Instead of bringing them, he begins to beat the mistress. Yeah. Whack, whack. And he cries to the master, <laughs> one or both. The master says to him, both, both. Then he beats the servant maid almost to pieces. Then he goes to the master, taking with him spade and hoe, and he sets to beating him with the spade and hoe until wow. he can no longer de defend himself. Then he thrashes the skin off his back and takes his pig and goes off home to his father and mother. And, wow. he, and as he lived well, he died well too. Holy fuck. Wait. He lived well. Was he there did a live hero? Well. Yeah, the madman. No, man. the madman, I guess, but <laughs> he's a son of a bitch from the beginning. He's a really bad guy, and this the, uh, the, the Tartaro is the closest thing we have to a hero, right? These are these are your heroes, Basque region. <laughs> yeah, he's great. He's a madman. He pulls people's backs off. What more do you want? <laughs> Uh, but that's just one of many stories of the Tartaro Fucking or crazy. Tartalo, uh, depending on what you're reading. Wow. Uh, the the cycloptic giant who is much like the stupid devil of Wales. Yeah. Oh. Easily tricked into crazy. losing every pull. bet. Poor guy. <laughs> wow. Good stuff. Well, yeah, that is, uh, they might be giants or big bass world. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, well, uh, wild. <laughs> Tartalo, Simply insane. The stupid party cyclops of yore. <laughs> I do like that he, like, after he eats people, he's like, bon ami, <laughs> and goes about <laughs> his business. Feels kind, feels kind of Muppety somehow. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, very uh, Muppet energies here. Yeah. It's kind of, a, kind of a fraggle rock vibe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, I want to talk to y'all about the lechuza, <gasps> or in Espanol, la lechuza. La lechuza. Uh, the lechuza is described um, differently from region to region, but mostly uh, is an owl with a lady's face. So Ooh, right. this is this is from scarymommy.com. <laughs> <laughs> the internet's number one source for scared mommies. This says, what is La Lechuza? Her description varies. Some describe the creature as a lar as large as seven feet tall with a 15 foot wingspan and the face of an old woman, while others describe it as a small bird with the face of an old woman. No matter what, she sounds scary AF, says scary mommy. Um these are, in fact, some some kind of uh, a few facts about La Lechuza uh, that then go into some firsthand accounts, which is what we're really here for. Uh, but I wanted to make sure that we are familiar with the folklore before we before we get into it. Um, so these are 17 creepy facts about La Lechuza from right. the Thought Catalog. Lechuza are shape-shifting witches, according to sto stories told by the Mexican and Texano people. Lechuza appears to be a large bird with a woman's face and hair. In folklore, a lechuza begins as a normal human woman who sells her soul to the devil in order to be given mystical powers and becomes a bruja, which is uh, kind of similar to um, some Native it's, American myths about yeah. those things that we don't say the name of. Yeah. Uh, afterwards, they continue to look like a normal woman during the day, but at night, they become lechuza with owl-like bodies and human heads. At night, lechuza fly through the air or perch somewhere hidden and look for prey. They make the noise of a human whistle or a crying infant in order to attract attention. And this is kind of a, so if you hear the whistle, you are in danger of becoming her meal, basically. Prey. Yeah. Uh, it is believed to also be an omen that somebody would die, uh, kind of like the uh, 
kind of like a banshee's wail if you hear the whistle right. the three three whistles i believe uh we'll we'll see if they go into it here i don't want to get and i never myself. thought about this before too but like that type of alert system to where like if you hear it you die mm -hmm. or if you hear it someone has died is really just like if you're in the area you're fucked yeah yeah <laughs> well yeah, usually there's... i suppose if you live around a lechuza you you you're taking your life if you your if you're around this whistle just hold your butt lechuza have the power to control the weather and can make it storm they also have the power to make your vehicle's battery die. Hmm. Interesting. Oh, boy. So they've got all the horror tropes up their sleeve. Yeah. Lechuza cannot be harmed by guns or most other weapons. They're immune to conventional gunfire. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the only thing that drives Lechuza away, salt. You can also try screaming slash cussing at it. <laughs> <laughs> and curse words it doesn't like salt its sodium levels are high and it's kind of prude linguistically it doesn't like yeah. all the curse words please yeah um so the these are some stories uh acquired from reddit um which are people who are account recounting their experiences with lechuza and uh and kind of stories that they heard growing up uh, I also heard a story that if you do hear the whistle, because sometimes people will uh, will whistle and then whistle back thinking it's their friend. Oh, my. And uh, if seems like a bad deal, if you have no reason to think that it's your friend, don't whistle back because then she just comes straight away and eats you probably eyes first. I can only imagine. Story one. Growing up, I was told by my siblings that La Lechuza was this huge black bird that would visit your home during the night and either sit outside your window or sit on top of the roof making whistling noises until you couldn't take it anymore. Once you went outside, <laughs> once you went outside, it would peck or scratch you. That doesn't sound so bad. Yeah. I mean, that's two. how that lady died in the staircase. Oh, well, fair enough. Story two. The story my grandmother told me was that lechuzas were witches who changed their bodies into owls so that they could travel around. Basically shapeshifters. Lol. She told me if I saw a lechuza, I was not to look it in the eye because if I did, it would snatch my soul at night when I slept. She also said they could be omens of death and misfortune. And this is story three. This is a bit longer. Story three. I swear on my life that I saw that bird. I All saw right, it. We get to take it. I saw it when I was about <laughs> nine or 10. I lived south of San Antonio along 30, 35 between two little towns called Von Orme and Lytle. I was at home alone waiting for my dad to get home from work. I was on the couch watching SpongeBob, which was, which was, is my favorite show. It was a bit late. Boy, this is from Reddit. It was a bit late. <laughs> the sun had set maybe an hour or so before, but the moon was full and lit everything enough that you could see like a dim light was on. My grandma's house was on the same plot of land for about a few hundred yards in front of my house. I looked out the window because I saw movement near her back door. I thought my dad had stopped by there first and was walking home. I ran outside on the front porch to wave at him and yell hello, but it wasn't my dad I saw out there. I saw this massive bird. I mean, this thing had to have been the size of Big Bird from Sesame Street. My kid Damn. memory might be exaggerating that a little bit, but it was huge, much bigger than any hawk or buzzard I'd seen before. It was sitting on the picnic table at my grandma's yard, and it was looking dead at me. I froze, but I didn't feel too scared. I was just really interested in this giant bird outside. It was jet black. All I could see was the outline of it and the eyes shining in the moonlight. I slowly went back inside and peeked at it through the window on the front door. I was so amazed by it. I had never seen anything like it. We stared at each other for a few minutes. Suddenly it spread its wings and flew away. I told my dad about it when he got home about an episode of SpongeBob later. <laughs> that's great. <laughs> <laughs> I like that's a great measurement of yeah. time. And he laughed it off. But I told my grandma the next day while eating breakfast and she went crazy. She started saying <laughs> prayers and rubbing eggs on me and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah. Yeah, that's You're a thing. real yeah. Catholic. Yeah, you pass the egg over, removes the sins. Um, then she told the me. egg or can you eat the egg afterwards? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I think I, you're supposed I to dispose you gotta get of rid it. of it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you got to huck it at the principal's car. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then he gets I was going to say a cop car, but yeah, the principal's <laughs> car works too. Yeah, he's kind of a cop of the school. Um, yeah. 
Then she told me the story of La Lechuza, which I had never heard before. It sent shivers down my spine, knowing that it was staring at me so intensely. After thinking about it for a few days, though, I started to wonder maybe if it wasn't there to hurt me, but to warn me about something. Sure enough, a few weeks later, a huge storm came through. There was a funnel cloud nearby, but it never actually touched down. The winds did do a lot of damage to my house, but my grandma's grandma's house was completely untouched and that picnic table was the only piece of furniture outside that wasn't blown away strange uh, well doesn't it also seem like maybe uh lechuza made that tornado happen yeah yeah as a yes. as a weather witch yes um here's another story from south texas story story number five we're skipping over four because it's something we've heard before I live in the South. I live in South Texas. I have been researching on the Lechuza tonight. I was driving back to town and I saw a huge white owl flew in front of my truck. I would say it was a coincidence, but this is the third time in three weeks that this has happened to me. Twice coming back from out of town, once at midnight getting out of work. I've been searching for sites on common birds to this region and the owls in this part of Texas don't come close to the bright white color and size of the owls. I have almost crashed into as they fly in front of my windshield. I yeah. did not believe in these urban legends, but after getting hexed in Panama, I know anything is possible. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, tell us about that now. Nope, that's the end. No more information is oh boy is uh, attributed. I do uh, think that that's that makes me think that Lechuza knows knew. Yeah, that's very much so, like what was that one movie? Silver Bullet. Oh yeah, right. The the Lechuza is a prominent member of the community that you were talking to, and they're keeping tabs on you. Yeah, I mean, it's possible, right? Because during the day, they're just regular ladies. Yeah. I also thought of this. So re- during the regular day, they're they're living their lady life. They're mm-hmm. having three full meals and then pretending to right. go to sleep with their husband. Yeah. They're run- running the mayor's office. Yep, and then they go out at night to feast again. It's a very hungry lifestyle. I'm into it. Here's another one from Reddit. They say, this is a true story about my mom and how I almost fell victim to La Lechuza. Yes. This happened when I was only a few weeks old and my mother decided to go to Mexico to show me to her family who lives there. She decided (laughs) to... Here he is. Look at the size of that head. Behold the head (laughs) child. The one that almost destroyed Um, me in birth. I made this in my (laughs) tum-tum. She decided to go by bus all the way there. When we got there, my mother told me that her family decided to have a big party to celebrate our arrival. When it was over, my grandmother took my mom and I to the guest bedroom where we would be sleeping in. Okay, all right. I'm scared of what's in the guest bedroom. My grandma bought an old school bassinet for me to sleep in while my mother slept in a bed across from me. My mom put me in the bassinet and put two small pillows beside me because she was afraid of me accidentally bumping my head. Yeah. Oh, so this is a person who's a baby at the time. Yes. Nope. As we got settled, my grandma's Rottweiler, named Rocky, came in. He didn't want to leave, to, so he stayed in our room. It was also hot that night, so my mom opened a sliding glass door that led to a balcony open to let some air in for the night. We were on the second floor, so she felt safe leaving it open. Of course. Soon after she got settled in and went to sleep, it was around 3 a.m. when my mom awoke from the loud growls and barks of Rocky. It was strange to her because he never acted this way. He was, ne- he was relatively quiet and gentle dog. So this was alarming to her. She then heard me crow- crying larger than new- usual and rushed to my aid. She was left shocked and speak- speechless to- as- with what she saw. I was on my stomach, face down on the little mattress. <laughs> okay. She immediately... Ah! <laughs> ah! Ah! Can babies do that? Ah! <laughs> um, she immediately picked me up to comfort me and turned her attention to Rocky, who was still growling and barking uncontrollably. He was facing the balcony. My mother turned to see what was, po- what po- was possibly barking at and screamed when she saw it. She explained it as the most ugliest and most gigantic owl she'd ever seen. Its mouth and wings wide open and its feathers seemed to be as black as coal. Rocky then ran to the balcony in an attempt to catch it, but the owl flew quickly away into the darkness. My grandpa, a few minutes later, said he heard the commotion and came to check on us. He found my mother in the middle of the room on the floor holding me like if she was shielding me and Rocky barking into the sky. 
Later, my grandma was trying to keep my mom from freaking out anymore when my grandpa came to tell them and told them that he found a large scratch on my leg. He also pointed out that the pillows my mother had used to keep my head in place were on the other side of the room, as if they were tossed out of the way. Hmm. Today, my mother tells me that I survived a kidnapping attempt from La Lechuza. Mexican legend says that La Lechuza is a creature, specifically a witch, who sold her soul to the devil in exchange for power. Giving that her ability to transform into a monster, a giving her the ability to transform into a giant owl. It is said that the lechuza goes to hunt at night for any potential victims, like animals, even drunk people, but more preferably, <laughs> children to snatch and take back to her hut in the mountains where she would devour or sacrifice them. Whenever I go to visit my family, they always call me lechuzita as a remembrance <laughs> for surviving <laughs> lechuza's attempt. The real hero here, though, is my grandma's dog, Rocky. He's the yep. one who stopped the owl from doing anything else and chasing it away. If it weren't for him, I don't know what else could have happened. Sadly, he passed away this year. I couldn't get to see him before as I live in the U.S., but I'll always remember him as my hero. Aww. Hero dog. We dog here around. at Werewolf Radar salute yeah. you, Rocky. We salute you, hero dog. I'm 17 years old today, and I still have the scar on my leg, the same place where the owl scratched me. Though I know logically, kind of, that it could have just been a regular, oddly gigantic owl, but it doesn't explain why it would have come into the house, throw the pillows, and leave me face planted with a scratch that never healed properly. All right. Let's, uh, largest owl. Uh, uh, yeah. Pretty crazy. Largest owl in North America and they get is the big. great horned owl. Mm-hmm. The largest owl in the war world is the Blockenstein fish owl that's Ooh. six feet wingspan. Dang. Six feet? Oh, the wingspan. Oh, six okay. Feet. Okay. So, like, this, that wasn't no was owl. Say, we've got a new Mothman by <laughs> six feet tall. Yeah, owls, I mean, in, uh, when they grow larger, wingspan, you know, like yeah. uh, big bird size, that's it. for like kids' imagination, that's seven they, feet tall, six to seven feet tall. And they generally don't go into people's house trying to steal babies and pets and stuff. I, yeah. Owls typically don't. Uh, this is another story. I'm Puerto Rican and I've heard similar story, but it was my uncle when he was an infant. Uh, my grandmother lived on the farm in a small town not far from Vieques, but she didn't describe an animal. She remembered a creature that was caught peeking through the window, but her father scared it away with a rifle. When her father left into town, she was by herself and a strange man came asking for my uncle who was only a few months old so she closed the door and hid inside until her father came back spooky shit that's so crazy yeah. i've heard uh a couple of really scary encounters with this being on um monsters among us this woman uh called and told a story about uh she would hear her mom talking to someone at night and her mom uh when she asked her about it she was like, or maybe it was an aunt uh when she asked her or maybe it was her grandma anyway uh when she asked her about it she said don't ever come out when you hear talking um uh, it's it's one of my friends visiting and i don't want you to meet them and then she ended up coming out and she saw her grandma talking to an, an owl, owl with a woman's face in the window oh. in the kitchen that screamed at her and flew away. Uh, so it's pretty wild. It, it seems to share a lot of kind of witchcraft um, tropes with, with different uh, shape changing folklore from around the world. And right. more and more, I'm coming to the conclusion that some people turn into animals. <laughs> and it's it's probably, just something <laughs> some humans can do. And it's probably not for any good reason. <laughs> and so uh, this has been my segment. I choose you, Lala Chusa. Nice. <laughs> I la lechuza you. Anyway, pretty spooky. Lechuza. All right, folks, that does it for yet another episode of Werewolf Radar. Shout out to all of our Patreon Dark Council members. Y'all are the yes. best, especially uh -huh. Adam P for coming and kicking it in the Zoom room today. The rest of you couldn't be here as you are fanning out across Latin America and, <laughs> uh, and Spain and the Basque region, seeking out. Bring, bringing our pamphlets Exactly. Full of all kinds of subversive literature. Translating how, our episodes into Spanish. Thank yeah, you. How, how to survive the chupacabra, how to survive lechuza, salt, or cussing, and how to <laughs> survive 
uh, Il Tantaro, which is just beat him at connect. Four. To load, just, yeah, yeah, just uh, <laughs> literally, can you can trick him anything. <laughs> um, shout out to Chuck from Snappy Little Numbers for our intro and outro song. Go follow him on the Twitter and uh, check us out on two on Mondays at 4 p.m. at twitch.tv forward slash werewolf underscore radar. We're going to be starting a new D&D campaign imminently. We did Tomorrow-y. session zero tomorrowly. Even. Or, well, you know, it'll be. Yeah, today this is released when this comes today. Out, but... Yeah. Holy shit. Time warp. Uh, get over there check it out if it's uh if it's 4 p.m mountain time where you are then we are on twitch right now playing our new campaign night bastard which uh is we're a band we are a band called night bastard oh jordan did the coolest (laughs) highlights i'm very proud of all all the boxes the the overlay looks so cool hell yeah raj put them together last night sent us some screenshots it looks very cool so come hang out with us on twitch Uh, It's going to be a wild time. Until then, drink plenty of water. Mm -hmm. uh, Eat protonaceous food. You need protein. Mm -hmm. Take a couple of Krylanol and cry it out. Yeah. Get yourself tubes of something. Yes. You know, meat paste. Yeah. Get a couple of tubes, even tomato paste. Toothpaste? It's made out of teeth. Yep. (laughs) You you use it in recipes that require Mm. ground up teeth. (laughs) Um, and of course, until next time, as always, on the count of three, our sign off line one, two, three, punch, punch the, the sky. sky! Additional clips from History Channel, ABC7 and CBS News. Sound designed by Blue Blanket Sound. Contact them at helloblueblueblueblueblueblueblueblueblueblueblueblueblueblueblueblueblueblueblueblueblueblueblueblueblueblueblueblueblueblueblueblueblueblueblueblueblueblueblueblueblueblueblueblueblueblueblueblu